Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. And we are here at week six. Week six. We did it. We made it six weeks. We're almost to two months doing this podcast. Um, before we get a couple of announcements, before we get into the story, uh, then we'll save all the rest of the announcements for the very end. First off is, what are we drinking tonight? Carly, what are we drinking tonight? We are drinking a beer called Blood Orange Blonde, or Blondie, however you want to describe it. Looks like it has a picture of an orange. I think it looks more like a grapefruit, to be honest. And it has the mm. aftertaste of a grapefruit. Um, it's definitely growing on me. When I first drank it, I'm not a beer drinker to begin with, but when I first took a sip, I thought, uh, but the more I'm drinking it, the more I really am looking for that orange grapefruit aftertaste mm -hmm. and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. It's actually, it's, it's a little tart though, mm -hmm. which I don't, I don't mind. And I like the name. Mm -hmm. It's kind of good for, uh, for tonight. Um, the second thing is I would like to apologize. I think Slender Man just came out. Um, I think the audio is a little bit of sketch on that, <laughs> but it could be my ears. So everyone that's listening to that, please let us know uh, either on the YouTube channel or send us an email if the audio is bad. Uh, but we have that fixed. Uh, from now on, I think we should have the crispiest audio that uh, technology and money can buy us. So <laughs> feel feel pretty good about that. I hope um, so. So uh, other announcements will come at the end of the episode. Carly, uh, I guess you're presenting tonight. What's the story? I am. It's my turn to read the story, and this one I think might be the scariest story so far. Ooh. Yeah. Um, uh, let's do it. You ready? Yeah, I'm for it. All right. Time now for the tale of the limping woman. Hmm? I creeped out already. Yeah. Okay. You hear the uneven footsteps first. Drag. Click. Drag, click. That's how you know she's behind you. The heel is broken off of her left shoe and she drags it across the ground with every step, a sharp contrast to the steady click of her still intact pump. Help me, she whispers. It's an urgent, anguished plea. Please, I'm hurt, help me. Don't turn around. That's when she gets you. Oof. Don't run. She still gets you, but this time, she's going to make it hurt. At least, that's the rumor anyway. Every small town has at least one, a local urban legend that everyone knows and swears is true because their sister's best friend's cousin's neighbor's grandson knew a fella who actually encountered it. Ours was the limping woman, so named for her aforementioned distinct gait. It was said that she was a teacher at the elementary school some decades before. Young, beautiful, and the victim of a terrible murder. She had been walking home to the house she shared with her parents one night after school when she realized she was being followed. She sped up, and so did her pursuer, until both were running down this dark country lane with only open farmland on either side. Her heel broke, and her ankle snapped, mm. and she fell as her pursuer became her murderer. Oh, God. It was a slow, torturous affair that left her beaten and covered in stab wounds. And when the killer was done, he just left her to bleed out beside the road. She wasn't found until the next morning, and by then, all anyone could do was search for the person responsible. While some believe the man was caught and dealt with not long after, others think he or she is still at large, and the limping woman, is the, as the victim came known to be, won't rest until her killer is caught. Wow. I was always skeptical at best of the story. I'd passed the spot where she was supposed to appear a hundred times without incident, as did everyone else I knew. If a murderous ghost lived there, I was pretty sure I would have seen her. I said as much to my friend Steffi when she brought up that a friend of hers, who had a friend, who had a friend, had met the limping woman during lunch at school one This day. is how all like stories are like, like yeah. you know, I knew a person who knew a person. Who knew Basically person. middle school rumors. <laughs> Graphic middle school rumors. Good lord. No, all right, I'm, sorry. I'm saying this is how middle school rumors like come about. Uh -huh. Someone's friends, friends, cousins, uncles, grandmother. That kind of deal. Anyway. Um, 
It's true. She was out on the old highway a couple nights ago, and we saw her. Steffi insisted, stubbornly over sandwiches. If she wasn't, if, if she actually saw her, wouldn't she be dead? I asked. Yeah. I thought you were supposed to turn around. You weren't supposed to turn around. Heard her. Whatever. You know what I mean, Rena. Sure, I said with a roll of my eyes. It always frustrated Steffi that I didn't share her willingness to believe the unbelievable. So how'd she get away? She said the words, duh. Oh, right. The woman's last words. Last words we all somehow know without ever having caught the one person who would actually <laughs> who would have heard them. We know them because the killer was never caught. He told people who told other people, and we all just magically knew to use them to ward off being killed. I finished for her. Steffi frowned. She loved all things spooky and supernatural and had spent a lot of time researching our local legends, especially the limping woman. It's not magic. It just reminds her of her own mother and she gets distracted by her grief and leaves you alone. Okay, okay, I said, hoping that would be enough to put an end to the topic. It was an argument neither of us would win and I didn't feel like getting into it again mm -hmm. over whether or not a ghost was real Oof. how old do you think these girls are i'm thinking freshman in high school you're thinking high school i'm thinking like like either mid or late, i got the vibe of his middle school late middle school like freshman high school okay something like that around yeah there. yeah um but yeah i don't want it. this this is getting good i'm sorry i'm really invested in this like keep going keep going i have nothing to add all right Oh, that's funny. It just says the age. At 15, it was starting <laughs> to feel silly. Almost freshman, I win. Steffi, however, wasn't going to let me off so easily. They say she, remi she remains because they got the wrong guy, and she's angry about it, like everyone knew it, but no one cared because they wanted to blame someone. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel at least a little bad for her? She's still waiting for justice after all this time. Steffi. She only goes after people who don't believe in her, you know. I didn't like the way Steffi said that. Like, she had an idea forming that I wouldn't approve of, and I shook my head. Whatever it is, no. We could go out there, out to the spot that she haunts. No, don't be dumb, I said. You don't believe anyway, so what's the big deal? I've walked past there a lot, okay? Nothing's ever happened. Have you gone after dark? Steffi had started to smile. No, but so what? That's when she's active. Going in the day doesn't count. This is dumb, I said again. We'll go tonight. Every argument I had was met with questions of whether I was too afraid and Steffi mocking me for being chicken. She kept it up for the rest of lunch, through our shared science class, and then passed me notes in the halls between classes after that. By the time she finally, by the time the bell rang, she had worn me down. But not because I believe she's there. I made sure she knew. I'm just going so you shut up. Good lord. <laughs> the sun set just after five that evening. Is this how chicks talk to each other? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she sounds extremely annoying. Like, yeah. really annoying. Oh, like, Steffi. Yeah, Steffi's like, my god, shut the hell up. Yeah, yeah. I'm picturing she her very golfy for some reason. Like, yeah, she was into supernatural and everything. Yeah, she's like, into yeah, all that she stuff. Yeah, she definitely Halloween has is definitely like, her favorite. the spiked um, necklace and you know, like the dark makeup and probably a single, single like a uh, single mother type of situation. Probably there's no father in the house. I don't know where you got that information. I don't know. I'm just creating this whole character. I was kind of gothy. It's the artistic type people. The that autistic end up. type or the artistic artistic, artistic? type okay. people that end up being a little bit more melancholy. Continue. All right. Thank you. Now I lost my spot. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, my goodness. Okay, okay, okay. The sun set just after five that evening. At seven, we met up on our bikes in front of my neighborhood. Her parents thought she was doing a project at mine. Mine thought I was at hers, etc. And we had two hours to ride out to the farm where the limping woman was said to haunt and get back before they started trading phone calls. 
We pedaled hard and fast, leaving behind the glow from windows and street lamps until darkness swallowed up the world around us. Only moonlight to guide us, we wove our way across town and passed into the outskirts where the insects were louder, the stars brighter, and the safety that came from feeling like you were being you were surrounded by other people fell away. Mm-hmm. It was hard not to feel entirely exposed out on that old road where flat fields rolled off into the distance on either side. There was the occasional barn or farmhouse set ways off down the road, dusty driveways, but otherwise, it really was just us and our bikes and the night. Mm. Up ahead, Steffi said from behind me, See the cross? That's the marker for her. We skid to a stop a few yards away from it and exchanged a glance, almost lost in the shadows. Scared, she asked, breathless with excitement. No, I said. It was an honest enough answer. I was nervous, for sure, but who wouldn't be when you're outside after dark? Mm -hmm. Remember, if you turn around, she gets you. If you try to run, she makes it worse. Just stand still when she's close by and say the words. Steffi spoke so seriously that I had to stifle a giggle. It was ridiculous. I kept trying to tell that to all the butterflies stirring in my stomach, but it didn't do much good. We climbed off our bikes and set them on the kickstand. Steffi groped about for my hand and entwined her fingers with mine. She was shaking. Ready? Let's just get this over with, I replied. We walked up to where the cross was placed and paused. Steffi squeezed my hand and took in a slow, shuddering breath. Her fear was starting to have an effect on me, quickening my heartbeat. But I squared my shoulders and clenched my jaw and took a step forward. We crept along the roadside, careful to keep our eyes pointed straight ahead. Mm -hmm. Steffi kept reminding me in a trembling whisper that looking anywhere else could lead to trouble. A minute or two passed. It couldn't have been much longer than that, despite feeling like it, and nothing seemed to happen. My fear began to ebb, replaced by an admittedly relieved giddiness that I had been right, and I almost turned to Steffi to say, I told you so. And then I realized how quiet it was. All the insects that had been singing loudly when we arrived had gone silent. That to me, oh my God, because that's so much like in all the stories, like it's always about that with nature, like how it shit knows when stuff's not right. Like the wildlife knows. We'll we'll say this at the end. Keep keep, keep going, keep going. There were no distant calls from night birds, no breeze passing over us, nothing. Just the sound of our own breathing. To my surprise, Steffi sighed, disappointed. I wondered if she realized how quiet everything had become. How could she not feel how claustrophobic it had become out on that open road? How closed off we were in the dark and the silence. I wanted to ask her, but the question was like a knot in my throat that I couldn't untangle. Behind us, grass rustled followed by the crunch of loose gravel underfoot. Oh boy. Like someone was pulling themselves slowly out of the field and onto the road. Drag, click, drag, click. Nope. Every Hard no. hair Hard no. on my body stood up at once. <laughs> <laughs> Rena, I hadn't realized that my grip on Steffi's hand had tightened so much. I could feel her eyes on me, but couldn't bring myself to look at her. From somewhere over my shoulder, a woman started to sob softly. Help me, she cried plaintively. Rena? Steffi said again. She's coming, I managed to whisper. Instead of being scared, Steffi snorted. (laughs) Real funny, I get it, okay? The limping woman is just made up. I'm convinced now, you don't have to rub it in. Drag, click, drag, click. The unmistakable sound of someone inching towards us, slowly, painfully crying out with each step. Please, she begged. I'm hurt and he's still out there. Steffi, I hissed, tears burning in my eyes. She's coming. 
There must have been something in my voice, a tightness that only true terror could cause, that convinced my friend that I wasn't just pretending. She grabbed my forearm with her other hand and clutched it until her nails were digging into my skin. She only goes after people who don't believe. That must be why. What do I do? I begged, my mind white and blank. My entire body was screaming to run, to get away from that thing that was getting closer and closer. But Steffi's firm grasp and my own mounting dread held me in place. Please, the limping woman sobbed. Turn around, help me. The words, Steffi said hurriedly. You have to say the words when she's right behind you. What words, I wanted to scream, but I couldn't speak or think. I could only hear her drag. Drag. Click. The legend said you'd hear her uneven footsteps and be forced to listen to her pleas. But no one ever mentioned the smell. Mm -mm. The stench of rot and earth and blood oozed through the air, slowly surrounding me and wrapping itself around me like tentacles. Smothering me, I gagged and pressed my free hand over my mouth and shook my head violently, trying to clear it trying to make sense of things. Steffi was jerking on my arm and saying something to me over and over again, but I could barely hear her over the limping woman's cries. The smell was getting so strong, making my stomach pitch and heave until I thought I'd be sick. I leaned heavily on Steffi and she pulled me in close so that her lips were beside my ear. Through the... vile of panic and nausea, I heard her scream, say the words, drag, click, drag, click. The limping woman was so close behind us now that I could feel the chill radiating off of her. The words I thought I had to say the words. It just reminds her of her own mother. She gets distracted by her grief and Say leaves you alone. Say the goddamn words. I heard Jesus Steffi's Christ. voice from the previous day echo in my head. Her mother. The words remind her of her mother. The limping woman's last words. Please. Bile rode in the back of my throat. My mother's waiting for me. The footsteps stopped and were replaced by a high-pitched, heart-wrenching keen. From somewhere off in the night, a dog started to howl. Insects began to sing. The wind whistled across the field. Sounds of normalcy, of life. The limping woman continued to screech while I found my legs again, and with Steffi in tow, tore back to the bikes. I never once looked up from the ground. The only thing I saw as we darted by were a pair of feet in torn stockings and pumps, the heel of one of which was missing. We didn't stop riding until we made it back to my lawn. God damn right. <laughs> and when we got there, I raced to the bushes on the side of the house and vomited. Steffi claims she didn't hear or see anything that night, but she believes I did. She believes that I encountered the limping woman. I tried to come up with some kind of rationalization for it, like power of suggestion or something. But when I think back to those footsteps and those sobs and that final scream, I know that there is no explanation. And now I too believe in the limping woman. And that was the tale of the limping woman. Sorry to all of our uh, our podcast listeners. I don't know if you can see it on our YouTube channel but right now, but I am just I have been like been twitching just because of how nervous that made me. Plus, I I hope you can't hear it right now, but there's I hope you can. There's a thunderstorm going on right now. Yeah, so, our whole house is kind of shaking. <laughs> our whole house. We have a bad electrical storm going on. Um and hopefully it's not a tornado or something. But so it's dark outside with lightning and everything's rumbling and she's telling this crap and I am just full born like goosebumps and I am <laughs> like crap. Like we try to make some of these episodes funny, uh, like the Wendigo one, a few, uh, a little bit more like fun. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Because it, I, I felt like it required it. It wasn't like the beast or Mr. Smiles, which was more dark. There's a more darker tone to this, like this one. 
Whereas like the Slender Man and Wendigo, all right, we could probably spoof it up there. There's some stupid things. There's some Derek's in there. Right. You some some that. moments, some people that made some really poor decisions. This wasn't really a poor decision. This was just two kids kind of playing around and being silly, you know, with a with a ghost tale. Everybody does it. Everybody mm-hmm. does it. And the way that the story portrayed how the one girl saw the ghost and the other girl yeah. didn't yeah. see the ghost, that mm-hmm. almost made it even more horrifying. It makes it more horrifying. And I, there's some elements in there that I really liked. Like one is the smell. Yes. I think it was the something that really threw me. The story that I read that scared me the most was The Beast. And the reason that one scared me, if you guys want to go listen to it, it's a really good one, um, was the girl described the smell. Mm-hmm. So it, sh- it, the creature may or may not appear, mm-hmm. but it was this pungent odor. And you didn't know if it was real or not until the end when the other people got involved. And like, yeah, we can smell this too. Right. And that just added such a weird, like, are we getting goosebumps thinking about? Because like, it hits you on another level when it's your right. nose. It's like every sense is now being either haunted yeah. or, you know, is, consumed. Is alert, is alert right. or consumed. Yeah, right. for it. And so that freaked me out. The other was, um, I think this one was from the Wendigo, but the idea that that the wildlife it just it just stops everything stops like you don't hear birds because the they wind, also feel the presence as well they yeah. feel the presence of this other being and they don't want to be around for it mm-hmm. and that's just that to me that is so freaky like because again you can rationalize stuff away to an extent I'm seeing things someone's playing on me but then when it's like wildlife stops. Mm-hmm. And then the wildlife stops and then it's like, I can smell something. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, this is really, I don't like this. This is weird. What's going on? Right. Um, that's a good story. Thank now, you. if you were a ghost, would you rather haunt somebody that is afraid of you or somebody that's not? That is interesting. Because in this story, if I'm correct, mm-hmm. she really goes after people that don't believe in her. Right. I, I feel like that makes your job harder though. Not necessarily because the whole thing is she can't go after people that believe in her. Why? I didn't say why. No, no, no. I meant like more on a big – like a bigger sense. Like wouldn't it be easier for you to haunt people that believe in you? Like it's just a weird thought I had. Like, okay, you know, if I wanted to terrorize people to the full extent, I want to find people that are already scared of me or know me. Yeah. That's so much – that's so interesting twist to the story. Like she doesn't care about the people that are afraid of her. She goes after the ones specifically that aren't. Or, right. Or, or, or Well, maybe she doesn't think – maybe she doesn't – maybe she thinks that they don't – know what to say to get away from her Mm -hmm. whereas the other ones that already know she exists and believe in her they would be able to get away from her easily because all they have to do is say the words Mm -hmm. yeah that's true that's true that was a great story carly that was a really really good one thank you um guys i really hope you like that that story uh i guess we're gonna make sure we keep everything short and sweet to announcements um by the way, let me give my announcement first. Go I'm for really it. excited about it. By the time this episode is released, it will be 60 days until Halloween, and I'm super excited. Halloween is coming, guys. Uh, we're going to do a lot of stuff for our YouTube channel. We're going to do some how-to arts and crafts. We're going to do some how-to, like carving a pumpkin, just stupid little knickknacks like that um, to help grow the channel. Tom's not great at art, so it's going to be gonna very be, enjoyable. It's going to be fun. Watching him <laughs> flail about. To see how horrifically bad I am at art. Um, we passed, I said it before, but we passed a hundred downloads. We are averaging right now. I know we've only been one week that we've been on all the platforms, but we're averaging over 30 downloads per week. I think it's like over, you know, a hundred, of course, total. That's big. Okay. Cause I, to be a decent podcast, you need to be like over like 26, 30. So that's a huge start. I want to say thank you to everybody. And so we're going to be releasing a bonus episode for Labor Day weekend. It's not going to be a long one. It's just a little morsel, something, something to say thank you for everything. Yep. Um, we will also have some bonus episodes for Halloween time. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do with that, but something special will be coming. Um, for our YouTube listeners, we are doing a Halloween special where we're going to be in costume. That is happening. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, we don't know what we're going to wear yet. Don't know what we're going to wear, but Maybe we are going to do something. Maybe give us some ideas. Yes. Shoot us a message on uh, Instagram. Please. We have an Instagram now. We do have a Facebook, uh, and we have an email address. The email address is sp- uh, spiritsandghoststories. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. If you have some thoughts on the show and how we can do better, please let me know. Also, we have another announcement, but that's going to be saved for next week. Um, we are taping these next two in advance, sadly, because uh, we have a wedding to go to and we're going to be out of town. So 
I hope when we come back and you enjoyed these episodes. Otherwise, um, thank you so much. My name is Thomas Ahrens. I'm Carly Burr. And we'll see you next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye, everybody. See ya. See ya.